Hey everyone, my name is Ben Heisch, and today we are gonna be talking about this beast of a camera, a medium format digital camera that actually ends up being pretty affordable in the realm of medium format digital, and that's the GFX 50R. GFX is by no means a new camera, nor is it a cheap camera or an inexpensive camera. But as technology has continued to advance and as Fujifilm honestly has just been coming out with more and more of their medium format cameras, you can pick up this 50R for around 3,500 bucks right now, which although it sounds like a lot of money for a sensor that's that big, it's kind of unheard of. Now right off the bat, a quick disclaimer, this camera is definitely not mine. I'm actually returning it to Fujifilm tomorrow and they didn't even request that I do a video about this or anything. I actually just requested, hey, can I try out the 50R? It's been a camera that I personally have been considering buying for uh, since its release. Um, and so they were gracious enough to send it over to me just to try out and everything. And I figured while I had it in my hands, I might as well do a review. So. No money changed hands, I definitely don't get to keep it, and it's getting sent back tomorrow, but just so you have the information. In terms of actual feel and build and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty uninspiring. Uh, I was talking to a friend about this the other day, and yes, in terms of just regular camera specs, if you picked up a regular, I don't know, Canon or Sony camera or something, yeah, it does feel more film-like and it feels more like a inspiring camera because it has some of these manual knobs and it's a little bit more, you know, it has like the offset viewfinder and things like a rangefinder has, but I don't know. It's just like, it's just very uninspiring. The viewfinder like resolution isn't that great. Um, I guess it's a few years old, so maybe that's that's probably more the reason than the fact that the view generator isn't that great. There's just a few things that are kind of clunky, and then just the overall design. It's it feels very ergonomic. Even like the the grips and stuff are great, but Fujifilm does make really really beautiful cameras, and it just feels like even though this is like a high end camera, they sort of styled it more along the lines of like the XE series, like the XE three or something. They're higher end camera, but it's styled more like their lower end cameras, if that makes sense. But I will say that they were allowing you to get into this sensor at a lower price by probably taking off some of the features from like the 50S. So overall, still a good idea. And it's not the worst design in the world by any means. It's much better than many other cameras. So yeah, it's vain, but those sort of are my thoughts, um, even after using it for a while. As a wedding and portrait photographer, I also wanted to try out some of their lenses. So they sent over the 110 F2, which doesn't sound that amazing, but on a medium format camera, this sensor is a 44 by 33 size. So much larger than full frame, which is 36 by 24 roughly. And it equates out to being about like an 85, 1.4 ish. Um, but with the four by three aspect ratio, it definitely gives a much more interesting feel than just a regular 85 millimeter. So I wanted something fast that would be good for portraits, be good for a wedding I had coming up and that lens delivered. But as you can kind of see, this obviously isn't going to be a review of the 110, but I'm going to talk about it because it's definitely a good option for the GFX series. It's definitely just like a really, really big, and like very awkward setup where, you know, the, the lens is just enormous. So if I was going to buy into the setup and I was desperate to get the 110, I probably would go with the 50S if I was gonna buy the 50 series or probably the 100S as it probably just, it just has better grip and it, it fits a little bit better. Maybe I could get away with buying a grip or something like that for the 50R, but in general, it just is, wasn't a great experience to use it together because the lens is just so big in comparison to the smaller body. I will say that the autofocus on this camera, just 
it's a medium format camera that came out a few years ago. So I, I was trying not to have high expectations, but I think the thing that happened was I would shoot my Leica cameras and then I would pull this camera up and it just felt so much, you know, so similar to like the modern other cameras. And I'm even focusing right now, the focus isn't bad. It's just not as fast as I'm used to, even from like the XE4 and those, you know, more modern, the newer sensors and stuff. And so it was a little bit of a disappointment, but it was funny because I went into it thinking it's a medium format camera, treat it like film. But then in the experience of actually using it, I brought it to my eye and would immediately feel like a digital camera still. And so <laughs> my expectations, I was trying to warn myself and they still got kind of messed up because I will say it's not the fastest thing in the world, but for portraits and for weddings and things like that where you're not expecting a lot of movement and you can kind of just like pop it up and focus, it's snappy enough to do that, but the continuous focus wasn't great in terms of, you know, trying to get people walking and, and all that stuff. So again, for a, like a portrait lens and everything worked great and that was my experience at least just with this lens on this camera. Now my thing around this was I just wanted to get into a medium format digital camera and because they are not exactly the most inexpensive things in the world, I definitely knew that there was availability to use Leica M mount lenses on these. So what I did was I purchased an adapter from Seven Artisans actually, whose lenses I've reviewed a bunch, but it just happened to be the most inexpensive mount that I could get from Amazon in the fastest amount of time. So with that being the case, I actually spent most of my time photographing with this TT Artisan's 50 millimeter F 1.4. And now you can see the feel of this body and this lens combination is significantly different. And then along with that, the just experience of photographing something with a very, very shallow depth of field and on a very, very small lens like this was really great. So the difference here is you're sort of calculating out a media format sensor with a full frame lens. This ends up changing from a 50 millimeter 1.4 perspective to about a 40 millimeter f 1.1, according to mmcalc.com, which I often use, which gives this this like medium, very medium format feel because the separation is a little bit like more intense and the the width, it just feels more of that like Pentax 67 or, you know, that just that kind of ridiculous look. Now, this lens was super fun to use and I used it a ton for the wedding I photographed and then I just photographed my brother and sister-in-law and their two kids and it's great. The thing that sucks about it is the distortion on this lens is fantastic on 35, but then when you pop it onto this camera, it warps things like crazy. So now I, go, I have another test video coming out soon where I put all every single lens that I own on the XC4, my Leica M10, and then on this and show kind of like how they all perform across those things because it's a very requested video of mine. Um, and in terms of sharpness and coverage, I can easily correct for the vignetting. The distortion is the thing that has been a lot harder to do on here and you can sort of see it in these examples. But the experience of using this and just kind of turning on focus peaking and using it as a very shallow depth of field, manually focused lens was great. I honestly loved it and it's definitely been making me consider buying one of these even more after tossing this lens on it and kind of playing around with that. Now, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you might've remembered that I reviewed and tested out the Hasselblad X1D2. I really wish I had both of these cameras together because they are obviously very similar because they share the same sensor. They're fairly similar in size, but there are a ton of reasons why they are incredibly different. And the first of which is if you're going to adapt any lenses on to the GFX 50R or the X1D2, it makes way more sense to use the 50R because it actually has a mechanical shutter in the body. Part of the reason why it's a little bit thicker, then you just don't get all of that 
sensor readout blur and all that stuff that you might be worried about with the Hasselblad. So if you're planning on doing any movement and want to adapt lenses instead of using native lenses, the GFX system is definitely the way to go there. The other thing that's been really fun is if you have followed me on social media at all on like Twitter or even Instagram, I talk a lot about how the X-Pan is a camera I've wanted for a long, long, long time. And you can program in for the JPEGs in an X-Pan crop. So I've used a bunch of other Leica lenses as well to get that really, really cinematic aspect ratio. I believe it's 65 by 24, which is basically, you know, two 35 millimeter frames stuck next to each other. And shooting that kind of eliminates a lot of the distortion and vignetting and stuff like that that you get in the corners because you're only getting that strip through the middle. And that allowed me to use all sorts of other lenses and just kind of play around with that. So just another thing about this camera that is really, really unique and something that I makes me even more interested in, you know, essentially purchasing one at some point. Now, I will say that the reason that I'm, I'm kind of more thinking about doing the 50R is that just the price is much more affordable in getting into that sort of ecosystem. I do think that I would probably enjoy the 100S and especially the 81.7. I think if I was gonna get into that kit and had the money to do it, that's definitely where I would go because that kind of fits those things. But I'm definitely considering either just buying this and adapting the lens that I already have or maybe buying another lens or maybe even just buying this and using the 81.7 at some point if I can save up for it. But using this and the images that came out of it was fantastic and it has even, it's basically just put even more of the thought in my mind about finding a way to purchase this camera. I can sort of sum this up saying that the autofocus was a bit of a disappointment the 110 was a great lens. The files and color and everything that I get out of here is amazing. I love that I can adapt other lenses to this system. I also love that I can get the X-Pan crop in a smaller body that is still very portable and fits the kind of cameras I like to use. Do I think it's an amazing camera and is going to be for most people? No. But do I think that this could really, really easily fit into my workflow and wouldn't cost a crazy amount of money for getting into a 50 megapixel medium format sensor? Yeah, I think I can try to, I'm gonna try to justify it. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I do have to send this camera back tomorrow, but um, after using it for a couple weeks, it was definitely a super fun experience and has just, continue to solidify more that I do want to pick one of these up in the future. And if you're interested in any of the other Fujifilm cameras that I've been reviewing and talking about, I will put a link to those as well. So thanks again, and I will see you on the next one.